Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today we will be featuring a Long Island watch, but not an Islander. Uh, it's going to be a new release from Hemel, the HF-15 airfoil. I say a Long Island watch because Hemel is founded and owned by Marvin Menke, who lives right here on Long Island, and eh, not too far from me, maybe 10 to 15 miles as the crow flies. Uh, so we'll get into those today. Really cool looking chronos. Um, so I popped this one on yesterday and made it to Instagram. This is my 2006 pre-ceramic sub. Uh, I guess they're appreciating in value. Kind of funny, although I'd never think of, of selling it. Uh, and then I actually don't sell, I don't think I've really sold any of my personal watches, maybe one or two over the years. Um, my, uh, this is my dad's day just with that tapestry dial, uh, love it. Anyway, um, let's head over and check out uh, these three Hemel watches. The HF-15 is going to come in three varieties. Uh, we have the black, ivory, and then the blue. The blue and the black are kind of tough to tell, diff tough to tell apart in photography. On screen, you can certainly see a difference, and in reality, you can certainly see a difference when this thing lights up. The blue is beautiful. It's very, very deep, deep blue. Uh, awesome, awesome. Um, so I guess, you know, I'm actually going to do most of it, though, on the ivory, because I think this is the most unique one. You know, almost a panda. You know, I moved the hands, but I guess I covered the name, so... Let me go like that. I don't want to cover the subdials either. Well, so I'm going to put them down at the bottom. Probably the best place for them for showing the watch off. So uh, this is the uh, Hemel Mechanical Chronograph Airfoil HF-15. Uh, HF-15 IV. Um, the black one has no appendix on the end, and then the blue one is NA for Navy. So uh, it is a mechanical chronograph, as you can see. We have not wound it up, so because it's on auto, shaking it will not do anything. So we'll start it up. We have a chronograph seconds here and a running seconds at the 9, and elapsed minutes counter at the 3. So we'll wind it up, and the elapsed seconds will start to go. So we are looking at a 42-millimeter uh, diameter case. It's a nice size. It's 15 millimeters thick to a very, it's almost flat. Look at that. You can see it when I tilt it. It's a very slightly domed sapphire crystal. Very wearable. 49 millimeters on the lug tip to lug tip. It is an exhibition case back. So you can see the Siegel ST19 movement in action. See the balance is going. And well, maybe, oh, you know, we'll play with the movement later. I'll show you the movement later. Uh... It's a screw down case back and it's got Hemel, Sapphire, mechanical airfoil, and then the ST19, and it is 10 atmospheres or 100 meters of water resistance. It's a 22 millimeter lug, 22 millimeter strap, and nice quick release pins. Uh, so this will become your favorite strap monster. As I tilted it over here, you might see some blue dots here. These are blue dots left over from the manufacturing process of making the buttons. They are kept on for protection so they don't get scuffed. Some people People sometimes think that they're cabochons. They are not. You can peel them off with a toothpick. Uh, so it's a mechanical hand winder, so you'll wind it until it hits a hard stop. You will know it, and you don't, you don't go any further. It'll run for around 40 hours or so before needing um, a refresh. But really, if you're going to wear it daily every day, you should give it a wind to its full stop every 24 hours or so. So it runs relatively um, accurately. Uh, let's see. So beautiful ivory dial, black subdials, nice hands. He's got C3 super loom, and then we have a ceramic bezel. A oh, beautiful coin edge bezel, by the way. Ceramic bezel insert um, with engraved numbers, and it is a dual time insert, which just makes the most sense. So you can use this in two different ways. You can use it as a second time zone, right? Um, if you want to set it. You know, maybe one hour ahead, you put the one at the top, and now you read off it's 5.40. Um, or, or, what I think it's more useful for is you would put the triangle, or the diamond, where the hour hand is. You start the chrono. Start the chrono, the seconds hand starts moving. Um, uh, the elapsed minutes will tick over one minute when this reaches 60. 
Uh, really cool, interesting um, accents on the minute subdial with those lines. Uh, I think that looks really nifty. Uh, just a very different visual cue. Uh, very, you could tell the guy's, uh, you know, an industrial designer from different cues in the watch. You know, putting the track outside of this subdial, uh, just so cool. Anyway, it's a 30 minute chronograph. So after 30 minutes elapsed, you would never know that the chronograph was running after an hour, two hour, three hour, it's never going to look different. So if you follow the hour hand in relation to uh, the diamond, after 30 minutes, the hour hand will be pointing at this dot. After 60 minutes, we'll be pointing at the one for one hour elapse. So it really turns this 30 minute chronograph, which most people would want more than a 30 minute chronograph. Um, let's watch the minute hand tick over. Boom. Uh, it turns it into a, now a 12 hour chronograph. Pretty nifty. Love the use of it. It shows that, you know, it's designed with intelligence in mind, right? A lot of people put a bezel on a watch. It's a 60-minute dive timer, obviously, which makes no sense. But this is a pilot's chronograph, it's what it's being billed as. So really sweet and really slick. Love it. So this is the ivory one. I'll show you the black. It's a nice black dial. The way it plays with the crystal, it's really nice. Almost like lost in a sea of liquid black. The glossiness of the insert. See the insert slope slightly to come up to the come up to the crystal. Very, very nicely done. Very nicely done. Uh, and then the blue, the navy, which is really cool. So the, all the inserts are black. I'm going to bump it up just a bit so you can see the blue. It's a beautiful, beautiful navy blue. Uh, the 10 is done red on here as it was on the black. Again, another just a very, very small visual difference, but it kind of sets everything off and just makes it so beautiful to look at. Um, I don't think I mentioned price. They're all $4.99, no matter which one you get. Um, so while this guy is running, why don't we uh, flip it over? So we are looking at the Seagull ST19 movement, which is, of course, a Chinese mechanical hand-wound chronograph movement based on an old Venus movement. I've done videos on it. It's a long story. Um, of how the machinery to make the movement was was moved uh, from Switzerland to I think first Russia and then China blah 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 very interesting history behind the movement um, but it still remains you know after the Polyot 3133 Mac time basically discontinued that movement this is pretty much the preeminent affordable mechanical chronograph movement uh, and you will notice I did a video on this a watch and learn there is a swan's neck regulator up here and that is used for fine regulation of the balance of course in a mass produced movement such as this it's probably more adornment than it is use although it is useful it does work obviously that's why it's there um, but a trained watchmaker could probably tune this thing really well but it does look really slick with the screw balanced against the regulator lever and then the swan's neck acts as a spring decent finishing blue screws i don't think they're really blued i think they're just um uh, plated uh, but it is a real mechanical chronograph so you can watch everything in action as i start and stop the chronograph the way the st19 works if you're interested it is a column it is a column wheel chronograph uh, there is the column wheel down here you can see it with the blue screw and the all the gears kind of sticking up the gear teeth so every time you engage and disengage the lever falls in and out of those teeth and what it's doing is it's actuating this lever so this center wheel here I guess I'm giving you more information um, I didn't really mean to turn into this kind of a video but it's going to because I'm fascinated by it these wheels are always running this wheel is running the uh, one of the subdials over here. You can see it turning. It's running running seconds. Okay, see it? See it? Right on my finger. I'll flip it over. Running seconds. See that? Okay. Oops. So then you have a transfer gear here, which it's spinning all the time. When you actuate the chronograph, you move this lever and it kicks it into the center wheel. This center wheel is not moving right now. This center wheel is center chronograph seconds. Frozen. See? I press the button engages the center wheel the center chronograph seconds is spinning okay and then after one minute you watch this tooth there's a little little spring in here it kicks out knocks the minute counter over one notch blah 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 very interesting it's a very delicate ballet stop it again reset when you reset a lot happens um 
basically, if uh, this lever moves in, it forces everybody back to zero. Okay. Um, something interesting about the ST19 movement, which does not happen in all movements, is that when you start the chronograph and then stop it, you've already pre-cocked the reset hammer. Do you see that? Uh, this reset hammer basically, I'll reset it. Ready? Watch this reset hammer right here. Ready? And boom, pre-cocked. Okay, so start stop is now relatively easy. Hammer doesn't move too much. And then when I go to reset it, whoops, stop it, reset it, hammer goes right in. So interesting that it's a it's a pre-cocking mechanism. Um, that was a lot of talk. Let's show you the loom. So that ivory dial is a full loomer. Check that out. The subdials are black. The hands are done in reverse. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. You would never know from the lights on that it is a full loom. Very interesting. And then look how he did. The other one, in contrast, the blue and the black. Yeah, extremely easy to read. Everything's done. The numbers are done. The hands are done. Even the subdial hands are done. Not really necessary, obviously, because you can't read the chronograph or the running seconds in the dark. Still looks amazing. And then, that, of course, uh, the bezel. So here it is on my six and three quarter inch wrist. Obviously, it fits perfectly. 42 is a great size for me. Um, there, that's how I'm doing the strap. You could see I'd be yeah, second to third less hole on the strap. Looks amazing. Feels great. So that'll do it. Uh, this has been Mark from LongIsleWatch.com showing you the Hemel HF15 airfoil pilot's chronograph. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so. Questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.